Hi, David. Good morning. Yes, I'm here with David Solomon, the CEO, of course, of Goldman Sachs. David, thanks for taking the time. Thanks, Sarah. It's great to be here with you. So it's a huge macro week. I think we have to start there. We're going to get inflation numbers. We're going to get a Fed decision. We're going to get an ECB decision, retail sales. Are you surprised at how resilient the U.S. economy has been holding up, given the inflation shock and the rate shock and the bank failures and everything else? The U.S. economy has been incredibly resilient. And um, I would say that uh, I have been surprised, you know, over the course of last year. I certainly predicted, given the economic tightening, we've seen, you know, a bumpier ride than we've had so far. You know, I still think we're at an uncertain moment. Um, and, you know, I just said at the conference here, while our economists, um, again, reduced their view on the chance of a recession in the U.S. I just think it's a period to be a little bit cautious. You know, I've got enormous respect for Jan Hatzius. You've always um, sounded more bearish than he is. You know, but, you know, he's been more right, you know, at this point. And so I think we look at it, you know, I think we could muddle through here, you know, with a much softer landing than we would have expected. But I think if you're running a big financial institution or you're running a business at the moment, we still could have an environment where we have slow, sluggish growth and inflation a little bit more sticky. So I think you've got to be a little bit cautious. That might not be a recession, but it certainly would feel like a recession if we had an environment with zero to one percent growth and three and a half to four percent inflation. Last month, you were at our CNBC CEO council and, and we were on a panel together and you were talking about how you do expect inflation to remain stickier and the Fed to keep hiking rates. Do you still feel like they have a lot more work to do? Well, I'm not referring necessarily to this week, but I do think inflation is, is a little bit stickier. Um, and, you know, I do think that in the distribution of outcomes, there's a reasonable chance that rates do go higher. I'm not saying they're definitely going to go there, Sarah, but I think you've got to be prepared for that. And, you know, what we've learned, we always think about things through a lens of risk management and being prepared. Um, you know, I'm not a good predictor of where interest rates will go. But I do think, given what's going on, the way we've tightened economic conditions, we still have stubborn inflation, there's really a chance that rates go higher. And if they do, you know, that probably is going to make the, econ the economic environment a little bit more challenging. So the recession comes when? <laughs> you know, if we had a recession, you know, I don't know, the end of this year, the first half of next year, but we might not. I mean, to the point, to Jan's view, you know, there's a reasonable chance the consumer has been more resilient. We still have relatively full employment. Um, hard to have a recession with 3.5% unemployment. And so we're watching the data like everybody else, and we'll just have to see. But so far, you know, things have been navigated reasonably well after what was obviously a very disruptive period. You know, we had significant disruption from the pandemic, significant disruption in terms of the magnitude of fiscal stimulus. And we're now, you know, trying to rebalance that. Sure, there have been some speed bumps, but, you know, I think, I think so far the economy has been more resilient than we expected. We got close to the debt ceiling. Now we're worried about all the issuance and the liquidity concerns there on top of QT. How, how, does, how do all these macro headwinds, primarily the volatility in rates, impact your business, investment banking and trading in particular? Well, there's no, there's no question that there is, um, you know, I think our clients are a little bit more risk off right now. Um, and we've seen that over the course of the last few months. Certainly, capital markets activity has been anemic for the last uh, 12 months or so, but that's not unusual when you change the environment and valuation so quickly. We really went after a very, very robust period in 2020 and 2021. We reset valuations in 2022. We reset capital costs, and that obviously slowed down capital markets activity significantly. I always say it takes four to six quarters to reset. We're kind of five quarters in. Are we seeing We're green st shoots? We're starting to see some green shoots. And I would expect capital markets activity to pick up as we head into 2024. Now, at the end of the day, people need capital. They can defer some of those activities. But at the end of the day, they can't postpone them indefinitely.